Hey everyone, you're watching Crafted by Metamorphic Customs. And today we'll be doing something new on the channel. We'll be building a model kit, specifically this Gundam Death Scythe unit model kit, which I've had around for about two years now. And that was the last time I really got to dive into a good model kit. I love these things. So we'll be building a little diorama for it at the end, nothing serious. We're mainly going to be focusing on this uh, model from Premium Bandai, which is uh, one of the best, if not the biggest, toy companies in the world. So, all right, diving into this kit. First, a little unboxing, taking a look at the images here. I'm going to be changing some of these colors, so I will be spray painting this. Um, so you'll see that a little later. But just going through all these sprues or runners, whatever you'd like to call these. There's a lot. Uh, Bandai does so well with these, just the ability to separate colors within the same sprue or within the same runner is really, really impressive. And the amount of parts you get with these kits for the price I, I find has long been impressive, but a lot of stuff. Um, and this one's kind of nice. Again, it's from Premium Bandai, so it's it's just basically they changed the wings on the back of this uh, Gundam. Uh, instead of having the, the cloak, I think this has more of the mechanical uh, looking wings, which I happen to like more. Um, so again, I'm glad I get to dive into this, but check and look through this uh, booklet, two booklets here. Uh, these are greatly put together. I mean, clearly they're in Japanese, but just following the pictures, you don't need to read anything. It's it's all there. Uh, very, very easy to follow instructions. And when it comes to colors, well, you can just apply any color you, you want, really. So, as you can imagine, what I start off by doing here is what anybody would start off by doing, by just clipping out the pieces using a uh, clipper tool here. This is one of the god hand a uh, snipper or clipper tools one of the best i'm um, using two different ones one to cut them off the sprues and then another snipper to specifically get a lot closer to the individual pieces and cut off the nubs um, the one that you use to get really close it's very precise very delicate so if you drop those snippers clippers again whatever you want to call them they might break uh, but it allows you to get in really close and do a little less sanding and filing which you'll see me do a lot here uh, I haven't included all of that because I don't want to bore you to death but I'll name the tools as I start using them uh, and you'll get to see uh, the process here so again a lot of clipping and snipping off sprues here uh, this could either be incredibly annoying or incredibly relaxing hopefully if you're doing this you can have some fun with it so again, I'm using this God Hand brand nipper. This is the 120, model number 120. And I use this uh, particular model to cut the pieces from the sprue. Uh, this one's not as sharp as this other nipper you're seeing now, which is, this is uh, model 125. Model 125, this is where I get much closer to the actual final pieces. And I use this 125 model to Again, get really close and cut off the remaining nubs. Uh, the 125 model is a single bladed uh, version. So only one of the blades in the nipper is sharp, which allows you to really get in there, get close, cut that nub off without damaging the piece. Then if I need to, I go in with an X-Acto blade. If there's still a little bit left or there's a little chunk left and I scrape it off as you saw there. Then finally, I come in with either maybe somewhere between 600 to 1000 grit uh, sandpaper. This is a Tamiya sponge, a sponging sand pad, and it's uh, I'm using a, a thousand grit here. Uh, yeah, a thousand grit to sand down the nubs, and I'll also use it to sand down the surfaces in general because I want to apply some paint to it. I'm not going to go any further than a thousand grit. I'm not going to go to, in other words, I'm not going to go to 1500 or 2000. Uh, I, these surfaces aren't going to be high gloss. I just want to get some texture in there um, so that the paint adheres later on. And in some cases, very, very few cases, there's some mold lines, which I like to outline with a black marker. So then I can come in and sand those off. The black marker uh, mark helps me 
know where the line is, especially if I'm trying to get rid of them on a piece of white uh, plastic. So having that black mark there, again, lets me see where that mold line is, and it lets me know essentially when it's gone. Um, because sometimes it's just hard to see on a white plastic surface. Uh, this time, I'm actually using 600 grit here. Uh, first trying to get rid of those mold lines again. Then I'll come back with 1,000 grit. And just uh, smooth that out. I'll continue using the 1,000 grit here just to, again, add some, well, some grit, some texture to the surfaces of all the pieces I know I'm going to paint. Uh, it's, I'm, again, I'm not going to go beyond this. A thousand grit is good enough. Uh, it's going to be a matte finish anyways on most of these surfaces. So, Except for the, the gray parts, which will be a, a gloss gray. In other words, the metal parts, if you will, or the inner frame parts is the right way to say it. Uh, those will be gloss, but even those, it'll be fine. Uh, this is just a Gundam. I'm not going for any competition level painting here. I'm not gonna, I'm not looking to enter any contest. So, a thousand grit is more than good. And now, uh, something that I like to do to make the piece a little bit more unique is to add some panel lines uh, by scribing. But I first start off uh, by drawing the lines uh, more or less freehand, as you see me doing here with a lead pencil. And these panel lines that you add really will make your piece stand out, make it a little bit more unique. I add some scribing uh, tape there, not Scotch brand tape, don't use that. <laughs> Uh, but I use a scribing tape that is very thick and adds, acts as a ruler, right? And then I use a scribing tool to then go over the lines I've drawn. And you have to, you have to have, give it s several slow passes. Take your time. If you're going to try this out for the first time, you don't want to slip and scratch the plastic. But the trick is just to, again, use this scribing tool, which is just imagine a thick exacto blade, right? Very thick. Um... The, and the point is fairly sharp. So that's how uh, this tool basically engraves the, the softer hips plastic here or ABS plastic, uh, whatever it may be. And I'm going to work my way through a few of the components, a few of the pieces, not all of them, right? But this is, for example, is a thigh piece. And I'm going to draw some random lines, whatever I think looks good. You know, you can get really, really complicated if you'd like. Uh, I'm just adding a few lines here and there. And I'll use the scribing tool again. I'm going to take my time. Remember, this video is really sped up, right? Because otherwise we'd be here for hours. I don't think you want to see that for hours. So, But again, key important fact here, take your time, especially if you're trying to scribe in panel lines, whether it be on a model kit, a 1-6 scale figure, whatever you're trying to scribe a panel line into, take some time. And I will leave links uh, to where you can purchase this exact scribing tool and scribing tape in the video description below, as I usually do. And I'll jump back in here to say, take your time. I'm going to say it again. If you're scribing, especially if this is your first time, be patient with it. You don't want to slip. Also, if this is your first time scribing, take it, make it easy for yourself. Don't try to scribe a panel line on a curved surface. Try to grab a component or a piece that has a completely flat surface. That's going to make it much easier. So, last tip on scribing before we move on. 
All right, bringing out the old airbrush spray booth, which is incredibly dusty and dirty. Uh, I haven't used this in a bit because uh, I haven't airbrushed in a bit, unfortunately. So just building this out. Luckily, I've got this portable unit. It's got, you don't see it here, but it's got a hose uh, connected to the extractor on the back. And I feed the hose out the window, which is to my left, uh, clearly out of the frame here. Uh, this barely fits, speaking of the booth, it barely fits in the frame, but you get the idea. Uh, so what I'm using here is alligator clips. You'll want to clip all the major components, which have now been clipped out of the sprue. They've been sanded. Uh, if I wanted a panel line added, I scribed it in, and I've done very, very minor sub-assemblies. The biggest sub-assembly you'll see here is probably those legs. Um... But I pretty much maintained everything in its individual piece. Well, practically what came off the sprue is what I've placed on an alligator clip. And then onto this uh, block of foam here, which is very helpful. And here we have Tamiya Surface Primer in a light gray. Uh, as you can see here, I'm doing an individual piece, as you would think. Um, this would take you a very long time to do piece by piece, after all. So I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm just going to go a little savage here and do it this way by kind of just priming all the pieces as they lay on the foam block. And I'm sure many people will tell you this is not the way to do this because it's not. But that will be our little secret. Let's move on to painting. I'm going to use Vallejo Mecha Color Titan Dark Blue. Yeah, believe it or not, I'm not just using Tamiya. Um, I'm going to be using some Mecha Vallejo, or Vallejo Mecha color. And to water them down, or thin them, I should say, I'm going to use Liquitex Airbrush Medium. I don't thin my airbrush paints. These are water-based airbrush paints, by the way. And I don't just thin them with water, uh, although you could. Uh, I find that if you thin them with water, they lose their adhesive properties, right? Their binders. So I use this Liquitex uh, medium air, uh, airbrush medium to thin down the airbrush paints. Yes, they're called airbrush paints. They're supposed to be ready to go through the airbrush, but if if you don't thin them down, uh, it'll clog up the airbrush. And actually, you'll probably see that happen a few times throughout this video if you just look at the, there you go. Look at the reservoir cup. I didn't thin it enough. Happens to the best of us. When that happens, uh, you'll start to get bubbles coming up in the reservoir cup. It might still work, but then eventually it'll stop. And you'll have to go in and unclog your airbrush. Uh, but anyhow, I am just spraying this Titan Dark Blue uh, on all the inner frame parts. Or what I like to call the metal parts. Obviously, it's a Gundam. It's all metal or some special alloy, right? But the inner frame parts, the dark gray parts that come dark gray off the sprue, that is what I am painting in dark titan blue actually let me correct myself it's not dark titan blue it's titan dark blue tomato tomato and yes i'm going to paint these piece by piece uh alligator clip by alligator clip uh no shortcuts here i want to make sure that the paint is evenly distributed and i have complete coverage on every piece And these inner frame pieces are the only ones that will have a gloss finish. And for that, believe it or not, I use Pledge uh, Future Floor Care as a gloss coat. Uh, not anything unique. It's pretty common in the modeling world. Pledge uh, Future products can be used. They're water-based, right? So they can be thinned with water and they can be used as a gloss coat if you just uh, spray them through an airbrush. So that's what I'm going to do for all the inner frame pieces that were painted in Titan Dark Blue. And from there, I'll move on to just Dark Blue. So, moving on to Vallejo Mecha Color Dark Blue. Now this Dark Blue, I really like this color. I wouldn't necessarily call it Dark Blue, although that is the exact name on the product. Um, I 
it's more of a it's it's more like their regular blue color but just a little less saturated uh i don't find this to be dark at all but i do love the color and this is i'm saying that because it's specifically lighter than the very very dark navy or dark blue that uh comes on the model kit or on this gundam unit uh which is the again the death scythe unit uh, i'm actually trying to go for a retro kind of retro batman colors you know uh batman from the 70s uh so he's trying to go for that shade of blue and i'm also going to be using trying to match that shade of gray uh, as you'll see in a few moments here so all of the parts that were dark blue are now well dark blue but as you can see vallejo dark blue is a lot lighter then i'll move to vallejo make a color light gray and uh, this is essentially all the parts that were white on the model, that were white uh, plastic, will now be Vallejo Mecha Color Light Gray. Pretty simple name. Just, again, getting even coverage on all the plastic components that were previously white will now be light gray. If you're spray painting along, remember to uh, touch the edges of all the components. Uh, sometimes the edges show through even after the Gundam is assembled. And if you don't apply uh, paint to the edges, well, you'll, obviously they'll show through. Moving on. Yellow. That's, that's the name. Yellow. Everything should be that simple, shouldn't it? Vallejo Mecha Color Yellow. And I'm going to use this on the yellow components now this yellow is a little bit more muted than the yellow uh that was the color of the substrate plastic because uh, you're probably asking well if the plastic was yellow why not just leave it that color right well, uh that the yellow that was on uh, that plastic or that the plastic was made of the pigment was a little too bright but this yellow is just slightly more muted uh less saturated i would say so it goes great with the previous colors you saw me use. And speaking of colors, let's move on to Vallejo Model Air, not Mecha Color, Model Air US Blue Gray. I used to use this color a lot on my Warhammer uh, Space, Space Wolf models from 40K. Love this uh, gray color, just a little bit of blue in it. It's beautiful. And believe it or not, I'm not spray painting this. I'm not airbrushing this, I should say. I'm actually brushing it on to certain panels. Remember, I added panel lines to define more panels on the model, and now I'm going to highlight that by painting some of those panels in this Model Air US blue-gray color. Just slightly darker gray, it'll really help um, create some color separation, basically, and give it a little bit more depth, a little bit, make it a little bit more interesting, and I uh, really didn't have a plan on where to put this. I just looked at the panel lines I did in the steps before, the panel lines I added by scribing them in, and, said, and thought, well, what would look better if it was a little darker gray? Just had fun with it. And I should mention, I'm using a Winsor & Newton Series 7 Kalinsky Sable Brush. Very important. These are by far my favorite uh, brushes for miniature painting. Uh, I guess it's the Sable Brush or Sable Hair. Uh, they really maintain their, their point uh, as long as you take care of them. You wash them after every use. Uh, don't use these for oil painting, just use them for water-based paints, like these Vallejo model colors and Vallejo mecha colors are all water-based, right? So use them for water-based paints, and they really help you get an even application, which is so hard to do sometimes with a brush. 
uh, barely any visible brush strokes here. Um, and in this case, because I'm not airbrushing, I'm painting it by hand, I'm not using airbrush medium. I'm literally just thinning the paint with water in this case, and it works just fine. Then we'll move on to panel line accent color from Tamiya for, you guessed it, the panel lines. Uh, this is an enamel-based ink or enamel-based wash, uh, which I will thin down uh, with enamel thinner. And then I shouldn't really be doing this with this brush, as I just said. Uh, you should only use this brush for water-based paints, and this is clearly enamel-based. So I'm going to break my own rule because I didn't have another brush line around. So as you can see, I'm using this Winsor Newton Series 7 to apply the enamel panel liner. So clearly I didn't use the brush applicator uh, f that comes in the Tamiya panel line accent color bottle. Uh, it comes with a brush, kind of like uh, nail polishes do, nail polish bottles. Uh, I didn't use that. You could easily use that if you had applied a gloss coat on this, uh, which I didn't. Uh, when you apply a gloss coat, the panel line paint will easily slide down the panels and down the recesses uh, and cleanup is very easy. But because I didn't apply the gloss coat to these components, remember I just applied the gloss coat to the inner frame, the dark uh, Titan blue or Titan dark blue uh, pieces which really don't have panel lines so uh, because I didn't apply that gloss coat here I am what it's called pin washing essentially is it's, that's when you get this wash or this panel accent color and put it into the panel lines and in any folds or creases or recesses using a brush uh, again hopefully this you'll find this to be relaxing rather than frustrating or aggravating because the whole point behind this is uh, to have fun and hopefully relax uh, it's, but it's fairly easy as long as you take your time you have a good brush that has a sharp point a sharp um, tip you should be uh, able to easily put this in and as you can see I mess up a little bit but I just quickly wipe it off with my thumb it's good paint uh, it'll come right off. And when I'm finally done applying all the panel lines, I'm going to switch over to water slide transfers or water or slide transfer, water transfer, decals, whatever you want to call them. Some people hate these. I love these, especially for Gundams. I think they really add detail and intricacy to the model so all you'll need here is an exacto blade to cut the decals out maybe some tweezers some q-tips a little bit of water and you'll be good to go and i'll be following the guide that was provided in the, in the box uh, so we're really just following these instructions and you'll start by cutting uh, the individual pieces so this is going to take a while as you can imagine You'll cut the individual decals or water transfers out using a sharp exacto make sure it's sharp and then go ahead and place the cut out decals into water solution some people may choose to use micro set and micro salt as you see here micro set helps the decal to set while the micro sole will help the decal melt into panel lines if it happens to lie over a panel line or melt onto a curved surface uh, but again you don't need to use microset or microsol you can literally use just water they're called water transfers for a reason so in my case i will often use both microsol uh, and microset or microset then salt uh, microset helps you move the pieces around a little easier but again you don't need these products uh, you can use just water and most of the time it'll work out just fine. But after the decal has been sitting on water, assuming you're just using water, you can then slide it off its backing. Sometimes you're going to have to fiddle around with it a little bit. Um, this is the first decal I think I did 
in many years so bear with me here as i get the hang of it <laughs> but as you can see there it slid off the backing i get rid of the backing and i'm going to use a brush it's a clean brush right maybe it's just got some water on it but i'm using a, what is a clean brush just to push around the decal so that it could get to its final lo location or where i feel happy with it uh, and that's it once it's there and just a little bit more fidgeting here i want to get it just right because i'm that meticulous about it once i've got it down just don't touch it leave it there if there's a little bit too much liquid water or whatever on the surface you can use one of the q-tips i showed before to dry off the excess water while being careful not to use the q-tip to move the decal at that point because you've already set it right uh, many people don't use a brush to move it around as i do i like using a brush i find it easier to use uh, to move around the decal until it's in the right place but again once i'm done i'm going to gently use a q-tip to soak up any additional water left on that surface very gently and that's it just let it dry and move on to the I think hundreds, I think there's over a hundred decals on that sheet. Don't worry, you don't have to. If you're if you're doing one of these models, whether it's a Gundam or a car kit, you don't have to use all the decals. You don't have to use any. Uh, in fact, you don't even have to follow a guide. You can put them wherever you want, whatever you think looks good. Um, but again, because I like these so much, I like putting a lot of them. Uh, I just again i just follow the guide uh, usually the guide has uh the best location for these because they are designed for these specific spots um i might put an additional one or two in here or there wherever i see think they look the best but just the process of applying all these uh in the same manner i mentioned before again you don't need microsol or set um or set or sol <laughs> You can just do this with water and you'll see it comes out just fine. And once we're done with the decals, let's seal them in with a nice clear coat to really integrate those decals onto the model. Now, I use Tester's Dual Coat and Gloss Coat. Yep, Dual Coat is really thick while Gloss Coat is really thin. So believe it or not, I use the Gloss Coat to thin the Dual Coat. We want a matte appearance. So what I do is about an 80 to 20 mix, 80%, 20%. So 80% dual coat, 20% gloss coat, more or less. It's not an exact ratio. And um, I use, I mix the two and I sprayed them through the airbrush on every single component except the inner frame. If you'll remember from before, again, the inner frame, which was, which was colored in a Titan dark blue color that was gloss coated with that Pledge Future Floor Shine. All the other components, the light gray, the dark blue, the yellows, all those will be coated in a matte coat, which again is a tester's dual coat mixed 80 to 20, 20 being the tester's gloss coat. Now, do you have to thin the dual coat with gloss coat? No, that's kind of one of my unique quirks uh, that I personally use. You can just you thin the dual coat with lacquer thinner. The dual coat is a lacquer thinner. Or you can just use Tamiya uh, clear coat or Super uh, Mr. S Mr. Hobby Super Clear. It's another option as well. Those are all good options. And uh, once that's done, as you can see, it's building time. You finally get to see the fruits of your labor thus far. That's a good looking uh, headpiece. And this model really slid together well. Sometimes when you paint it, it doesn't slide together well if you didn't prep the components. But in this case, it all worked out pretty good, no complaints. Everything fits really well. And I think the color combos here, I'm a little biased as you can imagine, right? But these color combos, looking pretty neat uh, again going for that 70s batman uh vibe that retro batman uh colors and it looked fun to me uh not that i don't like the original death scythe colors i do i think it looks great um but this is uh, a little more unique maybe a little bit more playful if you will 
I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Did I just completely ruin this model? Uh, let me let me know the truth. Uh, I can take it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I just I don't know why I, I like these colors. And I do like this backpack. Again, the premium Bandai version. I don't know if this is the first time this backpack was offered with this uh, Gundam with that side. But I do like this backpack on him rather than the, the cowl. Um, and yeah, everything just, again, everything went together very, very well. He's trying to see it really come together here. Can't complain. So far, so good. And we'll tackle our last bit here before we move on to the diorama component. Because of course it wouldn't be a complete Metamorphic Customs video without some kind of diorama. Even if it's a simple one. We'll keep this simple. It's just going to be a, a foreground and a background. It's going to require a little bit of painting, but trust me, it'll be easy. Probably more simple than some of the other things you've seen me do on this channel before. Just some simple cuts on some white foam core board from the dollar store. Remember to peel that paper off the foam, foam core board. Then I'm going to use this as a support. I'm going to remove this later on. I'm just taping this on to have a single piece uh, of surface that I'm going to paint using an airbrush. Uh, and I've cut this uh, stencil out, this cloudy uh, shape out of, believe it or not, a comic book backboard uh, spare one I had laying around. You can cut it out of anything. And let's start, let's start painting here. I'm going to start off with a elf skin tone color, and that's Game Air, again, from Vallejo Brand. And I'm just going to spray this through the airbrush and small circular motions. I know this is dif very difficult to see. Uh, since it's such a light color, uh, but nothing too complicated. Circular motions, which is the same thing I'll do with this moon yellow color again from Vallejo Game Air. Uh, this Game Air is another line uh, by Vallejo, as you can imagine. So again, just little circular motions creating these fluffy cloud-like uh, shapes, nothing specific. And here I'll move on to Squid Pink. Again, Game Air Color. Doing the same Bob Ross action here. And then moving on to Alien Purple. Gotta love the names. Uh, slightly more complicated on the names in the uh, Game Air line, but cool names nonetheless. And here you'll see me use a stencil. Just using it wherever. Uh, it's all about creating layers. The final product won't look uh, like this, right? Because it's all about layering to get to that final, uh, that final image, which you will see. And uh, I think it comes out pretty good, but I'll let you be the judge of it. Again, let me know in the comments here. But just uh, using the stencil, putting in these cloud textures here and there, try and just layer them over and over. Uh, I've moved on to uh, Imperial Blue here, by the way. Uh, and every now and then I'll come in with some black as I am now and again little little clouds gentle, little gentle clouds lines here again channeling some Bob Ross As you start to put in the darker colors, it'll start to create that depth uh, in the foreground and push it out against the background. Speaking of depth, coming in with some pale uh, yellow mixed with some white, about 50-50 here. Same uh, model of colors here, uh, Game Air. And I'm using the stencil and just doing quick hits, kind of at an angle, turning, trying to turn my airbrush uh, to more or less a 45 degree angle against um, my painting surface here to give the illusion of these streaks of, of light coming through some of these clouds. Uh, it makes it a more interesting, creates source lighting. And you'll, again, we're still layering here, far from being done. This whole piece um, 
was painted in a few hours, maybe, maybe a couple of hours at most. It really didn't take all that long to get this done, um, despite the many, many layers uh, that you'll see here. Then it's time to add some stars. This is a fun trick. Here you'll get some watered down, again, pale yellow mixed with white. Put it on a brush and just use air from the airbrush. No paint in the airbrush. The paint's all on the brush I have on my left hand there. And I use the air from the airbrush to spray the brush, which has paint on it, and that creates a speckle effect, which doubles as stars. We're not done here. Right now it just looks like kind of like paint paint splatter which is exactly what it is right but now we're going to go back with some imperial blue and here i'm not using a stencil i'm kind of just free handing these little strips of clouds notice again how i'm using the brush more or less at a 45 degree angle from the painting surface and just kind of pulling and pushing the paint um, that angle at least for me was important here so just again nothing nothing in mind just whatever looks good and continue i'll repeat again continue to create those layers so the paint splatter in the background which is stars if you will you know you're putting some clouds in front of that so these stars or paint splatter will be in the far background and as you start again adding the darker colors here you'll you'll see that depth coming in And once that's in, I'm going to turn my airbrush just straight on, no longer at a 45 degree angle. And I'm gonna hit all the edges of my surface here with this dark imperial blue. And just kind of capture all that. Uh, then again, more layers. I'm gonna come back in with that mix of pale yellow and white 50-50 mix here, or one-to-one. -one. And I'm gonna do the same thing I was doing before, uh, but no stencil this time. Just gonna freehand it. And now the brush is almost at a 20, well, maybe even you know, 10 degree, 15 degree angle away from the surface. And I'm creating more of those streaks, rays of light from behind these clouds in all directions. Then I'm gonna come in with black, just straight black. Uh, this is technically Vallejo Mecha color, but just pure black. And I'm going to do the same thing I was doing before to a lesser extent. So a couple of clouds at a 45 degree angle in the middle. Then I'm going to hit all the edges just straight on with the airbrush uh, to capture, right? To bring in fo focus to the center of that um, surface, that painted surface. And hopefully by now you can kind of see what I'm trying to do here. It's kind of this night sky, almost space galaxy, galaxy scene uh, that will serve as a backdrop to the uh, Gundam we just built and painted. So could you, instead of painting this, just have gone on any website, including Amazon, and bought a piece of background that has a galaxy printed on it? Yeah, absolutely. Heck, just print one by yourself at home, cut it out, and you've got a background. Uh, personally, I like I like adding this unique touch, uh, knowing that I, I kind of did this myself, for better or worse, right? Uh, and it's fun. And then notice I'm continuing with, guess what? Layering. We're going to do more stars, more paint splatters that serve as stars. These will be further in the foreground compared to the ones that are now in the background they're kind of filtered down by the layers of paint right these will now be closer to the foreground and of course you probably guessed it or we're not done there yet we're going to do a little bit more layering here i'm i'm brushing in one particular cloud over this large star also known as a glop of paint uh happy accidents right all right and this one will be a another large star i'm just using a brush to kind of bring out some streaks here some rays of light from the star and then finally we'll go in uh going back in with some imperial blue for some thin clouds at a 45 degree angle again 
all about layering. And uh, if you're asking, yeah, by now you could have stopped. I think this this gets the point across. But I like to come in and just add a little bit more to the point where I think it's it's done and complete. Um, and when that's all ready, I will remove the tape from the back, as you see I've done here. Remember the piece of tape I placed on the back as a support was just to keep the pieces together until uh, they were done being painted. And now I'm going to hit the edge of the foam core board, which was the painting surface, with some black, just blacking it out here. You can also do this to the back, uh, although it's not really necessary. Uh, nobody's going to see the back, at least not in my case, where I have this displayed. So just hitting the edges, and you're going to do this for all the pieces um, that will really, really help hide the, the white. But again, just do this to around the edges of all the foam core pieces. If you use foam core, if you use something thinner like canvas, you may not need to, you may not need to do this. And then we'll move on to our foreground. And for this, we're using XPS foam available at your local hardware store, which is also a very cheap piece of material. And I've cut out a square. Now this square is meant to fit in a D12 shelf, right? But you can cut this out in any size or shape you want. And then on top of that, more XPS foam cut into small irregular shaped mounds uh, that I will glue on to this square shape. And that is to create uh, surface texture as you'll see me do step by step here. So uh, I'm just gonna hot glue this on. Uh, these, these are just random shapes. Again, uh, you can create any shapes you want or, or no shapes. It could be a flat surface if you wanted it to be. So just place these on, again, hot glue. Real easy to do. No rocket science here. Uh, and then from here, I will move on to burning styrofoam, in which case, please use a mask, as you can see here. Uh, burning styrofoam, I'm using an old soldering iron uh, that I use only to do this, right? So don't use a good soldering iron. But uh, burning this, this uh, XPS foam, I shouldn't call it styrofoam, forgive me. Yeah. Burning this XPS foam, or any kind of foam for that matter, is uh, produces toxic fumes. So make sure your area is well ventilated. Again, I have a window to my left off screen, clearly off frame. Plus, I'm using that mask I just showed you. Uh, it is well worth the investment. Uh, it doesn't have to be a full face mask, but definitely should be a, a good mask that covers uh, and has filters for uh, your breathing, right? So at least obviously it has to cover your mouth and your nose, have filters uh, if you choose to burn styrofoam in this manner. You don't have to burn the foam. Again, sorry, XPS, I just said styrofoam. You don't need to burn the foam. You can just use a blade and texture the foam using uh, a utility knife and X-Acto blade, cutting chunks out. Uh, what burning does is, well, obviously it you can use it as a carving tool, but it also provides this uh, interesting texture uh, to the surface that you see here. So again, you don't have to, to burn it, but if you are, please make sure your area is well ventilated. I can't say that enough. So no particular pattern here. Again, just the, the texture being created by the burning in itself is, is pretty cool enough. And when the burning is complete, it's time for some Mod Podge, which I'm pouring into a previously used dirty cup because it doesn't matter if it gets dirty because I'm also going to mix that Mod Podge with tile grout. This is just basic uh, light gray colored tile grout. If you have a different color tile grout, as long as it's a light color, it doesn't matter. You can use any color and if the color is not right, you can add in some acrylic paint and tint this mixture. But again, the goal is to mix Mod Podge and Tile Grout, and you're going to use that to create a nice surface texture. Just make sure this is well mixed. I'm using here a popsicle stick. Uh, anything will do to mix it. And from here, it's time for some application fun. Just paint on this mixture that you've created. No special technique. 
um, nothing really special here. Just use a brush. Uh, try to use a brush you're, you're, you're comfortable throwing away. Use a cheap brush because this uh, mixture has a tendency to ruin your brushes. After all, it is half Mod Podge, which is glue. So, again, use a brush you're willing to throw away. Uh, you could also use the uh, the popsicle stick, right, uh, or anything else as an applicator. I find it's easier with a brush, but uh, to each their own. I am just adding one layer of this. No need. One fairly thick layer, right? Uh, less than an eighth of an inch thick. Uh, pretty, pretty thin, actually. It's it's going to be more than enough. This will have minimal shrinkage because you use Mod Podge and not Elmer's glue. I love Elmer's white glue. It's great, great PVA glue. However, it does shrink more than Mod Podge in my experience. And once you're done and once this is dry, uh, I will use an airbrush and FW, FW uh, inks to create some shade. And I did forget to film that part, so I apologize, guys. But you'll see me do that again in a little bit. What I did after using very, very subtle shading is come in with a brush and uh, dry brush this using a very light gray color or just basically white. Use a brush get a little bit of that white or light gray paint on that brush and wipe most of that paint away and then come in and just lightly pass the brush it's called dry brushing pick up those details then this is where I come in and use more of that FW black ink through an airbrush and uh, just lightly create some um, some shading here again bringing out the recesses trying to get that black paint in the recess or the, I should say, black ink in the recess. Uh, nothing too complicated. Uh, and we'll just end this by painting the edges in uh, black. This is just a cheap black hobby paint. Once that last bit of paint is applied and dry, we can move on to gluing on that galaxy backdrop with hot glue. If you remember, it was cut into five different pieces and that's just to create some, some depth uh, through the use of, of graphical design, if you will, through graphic design, layering. How many times have I said layering, right? <laughs> so, uh, I did the first three pieces, uh, either edge and the middle, as you see there. Then I'll use this strip of XPS to create, a, again, a little bit more depth. I cut this strip off before. And I'll then glue on the final two pieces on that strip. All right, and it'll create this, this uh, yes, I, again, I'll just call it a graphical element here uh, that incorporates some depth. And uh, there's your background. Nothing too complicated, fairly simple backdrop, fairly simple uh, diorama. Uh, very basic. Uh, I didn't want it to overwhelm the model, which is uh, the focus. And speaking of, here you have them. Uh, not, not too bad. I like it. It's exactly what I pictured in my head, uh, which doesn't always happen, right? You picture something, just doesn't turn out that way. In this case, the colors, perfect. Uh, this is what I was going for. You may not like this color version more so than the original Death Scythe colors. And if you don't, I can't blame you. But this is right up my alley here. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of the background. Fairly simple. Uh, but I had fun putting this together, painting it, making the this rather simple backdrop. And I get it. I say simple and you guys are probably saying... Well, you, you kind of painted that backdrop, but the important part is either A, have fun with it, or B, if you don't, if you think the backdrop's complicated, hey, just get a printed out picture of a galaxy. It'll, it'll work the same for you for the same purposes. 
but hopefully you've enjoyed watching this again uh, please remember to like the video if you did enjoy watching it subscribe it's been a while since my last video but if you subscribe it'll help you know when the next one comes out right it'll give you that reminder and uh, again thanks for watching really appreciate it guys hope you had fun and i look forward to seeing you guys in the next one until then stay crafted